Call the meeting of North Reading School Committee to order for Monday, December 4th, 2017. First order of business as usual is public input. Uh, I don't see many members of the public here who aren't on the agenda, so we can go right by that item. Next we have our student report, and I believe this is the first appearance for Lizzie Barrett, who is a member of the class of 2020, which would make you a sophomore. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty good, huh? The uh, math? I, did, I don't know how you figured that out without, uh, without using your phone. That's good. Lizzie, go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me. As we approach the holiday break, a lot has been happening here at North Reading High School. Over these past few weeks, the current senior college applicants are beginning to hear back from their schools. This can be an exciting but stressful time for the seniors. I know in my house, um, my sister has gotten the mail from my mom for like the first time in years <laughs> these past couple weeks. Um, the Academic Decathlon Club had the opportunity to host a conference here at North Reading on um, November 18th. Uh, students performed greatly at this event. Michael Tyrell received gold in music and silver in math, and both Mary Regan and Laura Wagner placed in economics. Um, the December Teacher of the Month is English teacher Mrs. Babcock. So Teacher of the Month is a program where student council sends out a survey among the student body each month, and the teacher with the most, most votes is elected. Um, and as a reward, they received a customized Hornet's mug from our council. Over the past two weeks, student council has mailed over 300 holiday cards to the troops. Um, we do this by setting up tables outside lunches and um, having students come up and write notes in the holiday cards, that, and we then mail them. Um, we love doing this event because it um, reminds us, it reminds those de deployed overseas that people are thinking of them, especially during the holiday season. Um, also with student council, their in-house leadership training will be on this Friday, or Friday, December 15th, it's a half day. Um, usually at this event, there is a motivational speaker that comes in, um, often this is a student council alumni. And officers hold workshops uh, that focus on the enhancement and leadership skills of all members of the council. So we kind of really wanna focus on getting the underclassmen, like freshmen and sophomores involved, and not just have them rely on the officers to like take the first step and propose ideas. Last Friday, December 1st, was uh, Lunch with the Scientist. This is a program, for those who are not familiar, where World of Sciences arranges for someone working in a science-based field to present during Power Blocks to students about their career. This is a great program to get students thinking about college to consider majoring in a field of science, and it exposes them to some fantastic job opportunities. Um, the speaker that we had, was his name was Joe Rin. He's a former engineer and now program manager at Teradyne here in North Reading. Um, I attended his presentation. I thought it was fascinating. He talked about how he developed and um, constructed the machinery used to mass produce like handheld electronics like iPhones. And he kind of like got students interested by saying how he works with major companies such as Apple and Samsung. Um, the deadline for the AFL and CIO scholarship exam applications for seniors is December 15th. And this exam is to be held on February 7th. And also the American legal classes have an upcoming field trip to the Moakley Courthouse. And the students that I've spoken with are very excited about this and to get that type of exposure. In terms of athletics, um, Tuesday, November 4th was the Fall Sports Awards. Winter sports season officially began on Monday, the 20th, November 27th. The football team ended their season seven and four with a fantastic win against Linfield on Thanksgiving Day. Some of the winter sports that are starting up right now are swim, indoor track, basketball, ski team, gymnastics, wrestling, hockey, and cheerleading. Recently, cheerleading has been very successful. They scored high enough at their state's competition, providing them with a bid to nationals in Dallas, Texas this January. And I don't know if anyone had a chance to see the play this weekend, but obviously a lot is happening at the high school in terms of fine arts. Beating the Beats was absolutely an amazing show. The rigging system here at the new high school makes it possible to fly actual people rather than just props. And one of the three judges was there this past Saturday, and they're quoted in saying, I forgot that I was at a high school performance because the show was a Broadway, Broadway caliber level, so they often forgot they were actually seeing it at a high school. Um, they sold out both Saturday shows already, and only a few tickets are left for this upcoming Friday show. They also have an event called Beast's Brunch, which is a super fun and unique experience for children. It's an interactive time, interactive time with the cast where they get a personal tour of the set, learn dance numbers from the play, and can take a picture with the cast. They're looking forward to the elementary and middle school shows this upcoming Tuesday. 
Also coming with up, upcoming performances is Dancing with the Hornets, which is Monday, December 18th at 6.30 p.m. Dancing with, it is a Dancing with the Stars based performance where members of the dance club try and teach athletes a dance routine. Six couples with students from four different sports are performing. Also, the cheerleading varsity team and dance club performed a number at the, this year's pep rally. Spirit Week this year was a huge success, a ton of participation from all grades and dressing up from popular themed days such as Decades Day and America Monday. There also was flash mob style a cappella performances from Notorious here at the high school. It was a unique way to get people excited about Spirit Week as they performed songs related to each themed day. Pep Rally was on the half day Wednesday the 22nd, and the seniors came out on top showing the most spirit dressed in their best PJs for their dream, dream year's senior theme. Also, the North Reading High School's Parent Association is in conjunction with SLAM, the Student Leaders and Mentoring Program, is again selling raffle calendars for $10 in the main office. A prize is picked every day throughout the month of January to encourage participation. Also, Student Council is hosting a new event where, with the local senior center. So oh, this idea was additionally proposed when we realized that a lot of the seniors at, in North Reading um, have access to electronic devices like cell phones and tablets, but they aren't sure how to use them. So what Student Council is doing is they're bringing um, five to 10 students to do a one-on-one -on -one experience, just a 45 minute class, teaching them how to use their cell phones and tablets to stay connected with the community. How do you sign up for that? <laughs> <laughs> electronic. <laughs> Jerry, the flip, flip phones flip are not included. Huh? Flip phones Mr. Mr. Vanessa is a little technologically <laughs> challenged. That's the joke here. <laughs> 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 also happening in the community is Interact Club is arranging Christmas calories for the seniors. This will be held at the Peabody Court building near the batch. Um, it's okay. <laughs> and also the international school trip for April 2019 has been announced. It's going to countries such as Hungary, Croatia, and Slovenia. This was extremely popular among the students as all 41 slots for the trip filled in just 24 hours. Wow. Um, and then to conclude this presentation, I have a student work report. Um, it's an essay on the book Animal Farm. It focuses on the allegory between the famous novel and the history of the Russian Revolution. And I really enjoyed writing this essay because I find it fascinating how often history is reflected in written works of that period of the time. And then attached on the back is just the rubric. Thank you. Any questions for Lizzie? Good job. Thank you. I have, I have a question on the, um, is that Teacher of the Month thing new or have we been doing it? We've been doing it oh. for the past two years. That's great. Mm -hmm. And also- Do you get multiple winners or does everybody have a turn? So once, <laughs> <laughs> so we do it every month and once a teacher has been a Teacher of the Month for that school year, they are taken off the list. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that's a great program with the, um, helping out the seniors in town. I think mm -hmm. that's excellent. Oh yeah. Working with them also. Mm -hmm. That's Can you sign him up for a couple yeah. <laughs> Yes. Do you qualify as a senior? Yeah. Not, 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 senior. not yet. No? Okay. Yeah. Mr. Webster, I, I want to thank Student Council for inviting me to participate in Dancing with the Hornets. I was happy I had a conflict with a school committee meeting. You're not doing oh, you, you're not I had a school committee oh, meeting. I couldn't do it. We can move the meeting. It's too late. Rehearsals are well underway. Huh? You need. Yes. <laughs> now that I'll pay to say. I really, they, they were, I, I was disappointed. I couldn't oh. help them out. <laughs> I, know several, I know several of us here saw the uh, musical this weekend. It yes. Was, this is probably that 10th or 12th I've seen. It was the best. It was so, from Outstanding. wire to wire, it was just incredible. It's hard, you know, and, and I, don't think, I don't think a lot of people understand. They think of football or basketball or hockey or volleyball, whatever. They think of all the practice hours. These kids put, toward the last month, they're putting in 10, 10 hour days after, the, you know, between what they do in school and then they're here till nine at night. Oh, the last two weeks before the play, every night. It, it showed, didn't it? The, the set. Performances was were unbelievable. How about the set? Just the stage set. alone. The stage was, the, it was just the, unbelievable. The whole, all, a lot of the behind the scenes, the technical aspects of the play, um, choreography, costumes. The dancing was, the dancing yeah, was I great. Mean, I, really, I just, know, how many high school plays have a live orchestra? I mean, is that yeah, kind of Yeah, I know, right. A lot of schools yeah. don't do musicals because they're too difficult. Because of that. Yeah. And, that, and that's another aspect of it that and I think And Eric Foreman does a great job with yeah, that they orchestra. They were, they were yeah. outstanding. They really, it was and I really like the underscoring. The, 
You, you really you do yeah. you like yeah, that? I learned that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's good. And I don't know what we're going to do next year because Eric's the guy who takes apart the floor for the orchestra yeah. pit. He said he'd come back for the right price. I next think you year. better just. <laughs> leave, I think you better just leave a hole there, John. <laughs> not put the floor back in. But it was. I just again. I want to you know, just praise all the students and staff involved. It was just outstanding. It seems to get better over here. It, it really does. And the sound quality. I think they had the new microphones better, and yeah. um, the sound quality was nearly so you perfect. Could hear everything. Yeah. Could hear everything. Mm. And the acting was great. And anyway. And what I like to see is the the younger kids in the community right. being able to see what's going on and what they can do when they get older and something and we, to look forward to. And I understand there were hundred, I think, one hundred and thirty-seven signups for the Beast Breakfast on Sunday. Yeah. So that was another nice event that they had. Right. I think that's what yeah. Adam McGovern told us this and morning. And just the way that they made the, um, you know, the carrot like the the. Lumiere and the you know yeah. Chip mm -hmm. and and Mrs. Mm -hmm. Potts the way they made them kind of come alive was it was great. Well, think of what this has done for the middle school program. Too. Yeah, oh, mm -hmm. with, the, with the two schools are combined, and you have the kids seeing mm -hmm. this type of production and on that type of a facility. It's and they do involve some of the elementary mm -hmm. students yeah. as well for yeah. some of the parts. It's very I smart. Is builds uh, yes. oh yeah mm -hmm. builds interest. Yeah. Building our team absolutely. The, the yeah. Yeah. Well, great job, Lizzie. I, I always Thank get nervous when you come in your first time. You're a sophomore and you're so good. This yeah. is now, where, where, where do you go from here? <laughs> well, home, I hope. Don't <laughs> no. stay do not stay. You can, you can leave. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Unless you're being punished for something. You know. No. All right. <laughs> okay, next I think we'll move to. Um, Thank you. We have the you, cheerleading co chair, Katie Roy. And I think we'll move to, she's got a little presentation for us and wants to talk can, about something right. that Lizzie That's mentioned, right. which is the cheerleaders. Um, uh, qualifying for the nationals so I'll turn it over to okay so um, the Chilean team qualified for nationals um, the competition we want to go to is NCA nationals which is in Dallas Texas on January 27th and 28th you have to um, meet two requirements for this you have to attend camp in the summer and we hosted a camp here for two other schools um, and the staff evaluates you during those three days of camp and um, you know, either awards you with a bid at the end. So all three teams were awarded with a bid at the end of those three days. And then in addition to that, you have to score um, a 176 at the state competition. So we scored a 179 on November 18th. Um, so our hope is to attend uh, nationals on the 27th and 28th. We would be flying there on the 26th and return on the 29th. So the girls would have to miss school on those two days. Um, NCA Nationals is a stay to play event, meaning you have to stay at a hotel that's associated with the competition. So we would stay uh, at the Crown Plaza, which is 0.6 miles from the convention center, just making it easy to move back and forth. I have talked with the families to see how many kids will be going. I think 17 of the girls or 18 of the girls are gonna be going. So we'd need two chaperones. Um, I would be a chaperone and then uh, the assistant coach, Caitlin Arnold, said she would be a chaperone, but she's a volunteer coach, so I don't think that she would qualify as a school employee. But Dave Johnson has agreed to step up and be our second chaperone, our second official chaperone. So Dave Johnson's going out to the he's competition? Gonna, he's going to go. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, the girls work really hard, uh, and this it's been a long time since the team has qualified for nationals, so... It's, it's a big deal for them to kind of get this nod from, you know, to their, all their hard work is being recognized at a high level. So I just had a question, and you might not be able to answer it. I'm fine, I'm fine with this. I'm going to vote yes. But the thing I'm, thing I'm interested in is um, we send, we don't send, but we have athletes who go down to the national track and field championships. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we don't approve that. So that is. That's, the, so this this seems like this is a sanctioned yes event versus that is like sponsored by Nike or something. Yeah. So this is a sanctioned like team event. Um, we actually have to let like the Massachusetts MSSEA know where we're going and how we're using the bid. Okay. I'm not a, like a hundred percent certain, but I have talked with um, Mr. Pinsopoulos about their national meets. So they it's not like recognized by right, they the can't state. wear their high school yeah uniform. they can't wear they their can't high school go uniform. by reading yeah or. so they're not going as a member of North Reading High School um, mr. Pinsopoulos is just sort of encouraging his athletes saying hey you you may you know you made it this far you should go to this event and I know that he's gone to see them a couple of right. times too um, which is awesome but because it's not they're not going as a 
you know, as a competing member of North Reading High School, they're just going sort of on their own. So you answered my other question, though, because I was going to ask if this was through the MSSA. Which yeah, so this is... Your um, leading is not under MIAA, it's under MSSA. Right, it's under the MSSEA. So there's several events you can go to if you get the qualifying score at states. Um, this is just the one that we kind of have been working towards. Um, there's, there's a couple other ones you can go to, but this is the one that we, because we got that bid in the summer, was right. we were kind of working towards this event. Jerry? Do you have any idea how many teams will be there? I don't. We won't know how many teams are going to be there until they release the order, um, which will probably not happen until registration is closed two weeks before the event. Last year, I think that there was about 22 in the division that we would be competing oh, really? in. Yeah. And a school from Massachusetts won last year. Really? <laughs> yeah. I hope a school from Massachusetts wins again this year. <laughs> Me too. I really do. <laughs> any other questions? Um, how many... You said there's 17 or 18 cheerleaders. Yeah. How many is that out of the squad? There's 21 total on varsity, um, and most of them are going. We have we competed 14, um, and then we had some alternates. Um, I am going to make some changes to the routine and try to incorporate as many of the girls who are able to make the trip so that they can compete on the map because I think if they're going to travel down there, um, you know, we'd like to get as many of them to have the experience as we can. Very good. So when I was reading, of course, I go online, I'm reading through the stuff, and it recommends that you also have alternates, so yeah. so if someone gets hurt or, yes. or whatever, so. Yeah, so we'll probably still have one or two alternates um, <clears throat> after we add a few more in. Yeah. Um, at that point, I would hope, you know, that wouldn't happen that late in the season, but it, you know, unfortunately things do, right. things do happen um, and have happened, I and mean, we've been through warm-ups and, competed and in the first, uh, this was two years ago, in the first 20 seconds of our routine, one of our cheerleaders did a back handspring and dislocated her elbow doing a back handspring. So we oh. had to go back through warm ups and rework everything. So, but they were able to do it. <laughs> Magic that they make happen. <laughs> Just one question. Julie? As far as the cost for the trip, mm -hmm. Are the students and families covering the cost of the trip? Yeah, so the majority of the trip is gonna be covered by the families. Um, and they've been given this information up front, um, and they know that there's going to be a deposit that needs to be made um, for about $500 this week. And then we have a few weeks to fundraise to hopefully defer a little bit of the cost. We have some fundraising money in our account at the school right now, so we can use that as well. Um, but the majority of the cost is going to be with the indiv individual families. As far as I know, this is the only competitive sport at the school where we would go to the nationals right as as a high school team i don't think there's any any other i, I mean i don't know no i don't think there are yeah, yeah. it's great I, I i think it's wonderful i mean i yeah. think anytime i mean I'm, I'm amazed how involved the students are here and, oh. and even the size of the team like just so many people participate in sports and yeah I, mean, I think it's phenomenal that's our goal this phenomenal. was the first year that we had a jv for cheerleading. Oh, you did have JV. Yeah. We had a JV, yeah, the first year um, because we just had so many kids that wanted to do it. It was awesome. I think it's great. No. So are they, going to, are they going to some of the JV games or the football they, games? This or? season, they, we all just went to the varsity games, and yeah. then they just competed um, as a JV team. Oh, okay. So if the program continues, I would hope that we can kind of get them to go to some of the JV games too just so that we have some support, you know, for the JV football team as well. Um, it was our first year kind of navigating through and figuring it out this first season. And we never get the cheerleading coach here, so I have a million questions. Do the sure. cheerleaders go to hockey? We do try to go to a few hockey games. Uh, so we do all the home basketball games. Right. And then we try to do a few hockey games throughout the season. Um, the big ones, like we try to go to the Linfield game. Then when they go to the playoffs, we always go to the playoff games right. just because that's kind of, you know, it's a really big deal for them. Um, I know the hockey parents really like it when we go, so we try to make it to a few. It's it's hockey's harder because not being on campus, so it's not yeah you know, having having to get to Saugus or wherever. It's harder, and depending on the arena, some of the arena like last year, the arena didn't want the cheerleaders to go, which oh. I thought was kind of funky, just because of I guess space and size and things like that. Yeah, it's um, it's a it's an old building. Yeah, to, to be kind, and there's not a lot of seating, yeah, so and there's that, not a lot of space. I think there. that that was the issue when Dave <laughs> yeah. called and said, you know, I'm gonna send 25 cheerleaders. They were kind of like ah. <laughs> I don't know if you should. but when they went to we did go to the playoff games for them yeah. last year which was fun yeah. um, so great any other questions Mr. Bernard I would comment if I could uh, Katie has been with our cheer program for a long time yes yeah, my eighth season yeah and mm -hmm. has done a very very nice job and thank I think you that this is 
you know, I think a reflection of her commitment and I think the, time, the longevity that you've spent with the program is yeah, it's been really paid off. Not, yeah, not just through this event because you've always done a nice job. But Thank I think you. This is just a, I think a nice public example of just Thank how hard you. you work. I love these kids. I love this program. I love this town. I've been here oh, forever. Yes. I grew up here and how about the school? Here. Do you love the school? I love the school. is amazing. <laughs> the first time I walked in the school and it was like rebuilt, I was like, I want to go back and I want to go to school here. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's just uh, you got my vote. They're, they're great. Do you use the um, the auxiliary gym for your practices? We do, yeah. We use the auxiliary gym, um, which is an awesome space for us, um, especially in the fall because there's no competition for it in the fall. Right, exactly. <laughs> in winter, it gets a little more tricky just yeah. because there's so many teams indoors. Um, right. But it's a great space. I'm so glad that that was added as just an extra because it would have been tough if we just had that one gym. Yeah. Um, but that added space is huge. I'm so glad the state approved that extra gym mm -hmm. for us. Yeah, so I, think long, we, I think we had a, a long trip yeah. from the town hall, remember? <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> when I think about, I coached in the youth program. We used to practice in the town hall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so at this point, I will entertain a motion to approve the trip for the North Reading High School cheerleading team to attend the cheerle uh, National Cheerleading Association's National Cheerleading Competition in yeah. Dallas, Texas, yeah. uh, January 27th through 29th, 2018. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Good luck. Fun. Thank you guys right. so much. I really Good appreciate luck. you hearing <laughs> us quickly and moving things Just along. one quick question. Is Danvers going? Uh, I don't think Danvers is going. They, they probably didn't qualify. Winter, I don't think that they're going this fall. There's a few other teams from right around here. Wilmington's going. Uh, Masco's going. Oh. Who won? Um, who won our division in the state that we were in? Ah, Remember? Fairhaven. Fairhaven. They had a, oh yeah, they had a really high score. Yes, they were 199. Yeah. They were co-ed and then their boy graduated. And I was like, find another boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so they had, oh, they had, they were co-ed before? Yeah, they were co-ed last year and then the, the boy graduated. He was a senior, so oh, they so went it's back a different, to the division. Um, I remember when uh, when uh, Greta Lawrence came here for uh, basketball playoffs last year, they had a couple of yeah. boys. Remember that? Yeah, and cheerleaders? Yeah, they were, they were good. They've come a long way. Yeah, they were good. In the last few years, they've really come a long way. They, yeah. they were that's cool. a nice school. Right? Yeah, really nice. Really oh, yeah. Nice. Thank you. Thank you all so much. See you later. Bye-bye. I'm Thank thoroughly you. impressed by Mr. Webster's knowledge of cheerleading. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little... I'm, I'm impressed I'm about it. I'm, I'm a little impressed. concerned about it. I'm impressed. <laughs> what? I do research. I'm I have impressed. nothing else to do. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> okay. Next, let's get back to regular order. Um, I don't know if you have really a formal report on MSBA SSBC. So I think for the first time, Mr. Webster, I do not. I do not have a formal uh, report. I just indicated in my report to you that um, we're anticipating the final meeting for, I'll say, kind of this phase of the construction project uh, prior to the formal closeout with the MSBA uh, to be held on December 12th. Well, <laughs> I do have some questions and comments. Man, but and I, am, two, yeah. two years I wouldn't late. necessarily say that that's going to be the yeah, last meeting. I would but agree. We'll take it from there. <laughs> uh, we are making progress on the um, wastewater treatment plant cooling tower issue. So, yeah, I, I have an update for you on that. I actually have a conference call tomorrow. Oh, excuse me. No, separate matter. <laughs> okay. um, wastewater treatment plant, we had a gentleman come out, a third party uh, person that uh, was recommended to me by Andrew Lafferty of the Public Works Department here in North Reading who came out and did a site visit um, just about three weeks ago. Um, I invited Mr. Bowers. To, to participate given his engineering background. And I think we had, uh, I would characterize the meeting as very positive. He spent about two to three hours here. We had about an hour meeting in my office and then he actually did a field trip down to um, the facilities room here in this building and also down at the plant itself. And he has issu and issued some preliminary recommendations um, probably midweek last week, I would say. And um, his, what he needs next is a meeting. He wants to meet with the, the wastewater treatment plant operator um, that we contract with, and that meeting is being set up for this week. And I think based on the conversation that he has with the operator, who we're very pleased with, yeah. um, we've been pleased with, with the person that's been assigned to us from Weston and Sampson, um, he thinks he has some recommendations for us that might be um, both beneficial and also um, I think at a much less much less of a cost than we might have first anticipated when right. we when we um, send the, the water from the cooling right. system down to the wastewater treatment plant. So, a uh, gentleman's name is Bob Rafferty. He's um, an environmentalist. Um, seemed very knowledgeable and very um, very diligent. So, I'm I'm optimistic that his recommendations will be something that I can then bring to the SSBC to consider because I think there will be will be an additional cost 
to implement his what his recommendation is to um, just to kind of make sure that we're doing everything we can to operate the wastewater treatment plant properly. Okay. I noticed, and I, this I guess this has something to do with the building project, although not a lot. But the geese poop all over the fields. It's it's just amazing how bad. I guess there's nothing we can do about. Yeah, it. I know we, that you know it's funny they come in waves, and honestly, they they have no boundaries. I mean, they'll right. be you know in the pot right in the road, right in the access road. The access. Um, I was I was I came up to look at the progress on the on the restroom facility at the turf building again. Having no life, I have to find things to do, and I just walking on the. Yeah. Sidewalk. You couldn't even walk because it was. Yeah, they're they're definitely around. The Canada geese are around. We got hit hard in the fall. I remember in the early fall, they were all over the parking lot. Yeah, and they were back. Yeah. 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 You see Mel with a little sheet they counting they the poop. Yeah, coyotes. <laughs> I was counting the geese. No, coyotes don't work. The fake coyotes. You know, we we tried those for a period of time, but I I don't know if they just got onto them and like they were yeah, they they the coyotes. Boys. Yeah, I mean, it just <laughs> they worked for a short period of time. And I know there was some discussion about a, a gun or a siren gun. And, oh, and yeah, neighbors weren't An air pistol kind. Yeah, of. and that didn't really go well with the neighbors, which I can kind of understand. So yeah, yeah and I, I think we also there were some there was I think mild reservation, I guess, because we knew what was going on. Right, but, but they in a school would, environment right. too. We would you know we didn't know that that was a. A great idea. Right. So. right, Marty Tilton was just going to go out there occasionally and just fire this thing, yeah. and then people around the neighborhood, of course, would be going, "What? What happened? What happened?" Because there's no warning, right? Yeah, that's not good. So that that's not going to work either. I, I don't know what the answer is, but anyway, it's uh, it's gross. Okay. <laughs> right. Anything else on uh, school <clears throat> building project? No, I just I would just add to you that I know that there have been some other outstanding items that we continue to work, but the Public Works Department has been very helpful. Um, we're looking at some water, you know, water quality issues. We've had some testing done. I think we're, you know, in a good place as far as that goes. But, um, <coughs> you know, we, we're just, I don't think there are any, there are no outstanding punch list items that remain. But, um, you know, we're, we're still being diligent, I think, in our work to manage the heating, ventilation, air conditioning system. Mm -hmm. I think we've made some significant progress. Um, the contract with the Daikin Company, which is the manufacturer and installer of the rooftop units, um, I think has been a very positive step for us. Do you yeah, agree, Michael? I would agree, yeah. Um, we're working right now on some lighting management issues um, to save electricity. And we've had, I think, some, again, some good success with a company that we've contracted with that um, was, was, on, was as part of the project, a company called Acuity. Um, they did a, a, a visit about a week or so ago um, where we think we, we, we yeah. really learned a lot about how to schedule the lighting handle systems. handle the controls, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, we just, we, I think we're, we're finding out that there's, there are uh, more efficient ways to program the lighting, particularly on off hours, so that we you know, aren't running as many lights as we, you know, we have been. Because that's one of the questions I have related to the outside lighting and bulbs burning out is, how, how long do those lights stay on right through the night? The outside lights? Yeah. Yes. Is there is there? I'm talking. What I'm talking about is interior light. Okay. Because I'm wondering, is there a way to have every other light on when it, you know at three in the morning? I don't know. It might be. Because you know, I'm something. just looking at ways of one trying to save money. Yeah. Obviously. No, I understand. And, and two, have fewer lights burning out yeah. because we're only burning certain yeah. lights around the clock or whatever. I don't know. I don't know the answer to the question. I, I understand what you're asking. It's something we can ask. Yeah. Um, because it would be helpful to not. And I do appreciate the fact that we're working to replace, when we replace those bulbs, we're replacing them with LED bulbs. We are, right. And I do also which appreciate. Which are brighter and better lighting, yeah. too, obviously. Yeah. And, and they, they, they last longer, the too. The awning has now has, has all its bulbs working. Um, yes. Coming into the back. The gym, the gym, yeah. Right. It's, right. Much, it's much better. So but I'd second what John said. It's been a learning curve yeah. for this yeah. building. Oh, yeah. it, it has. You know, the systems are very sophisticated, yeah. um, but I, I feel like we've made progress yes. in a number of significant areas. Yeah. You know, the, the HVAC being probably um, the most significant. That probably took us a couple of years to get a handle I, on I think you're right. It's yeah. been a challenge. I think, yeah. I think I, I'd like to think we're kind of there now, you know, but it's taken, yeah, yeah it's taken so. some work. It's, it's, it, it's I can't think of a better word. It's the, it very sophisticated. And it's system. never going to be perfect because if you have an unusually warm day in the summer, in yeah. the winter time, yep. Yep. you've got it set for a regular winter day, and it's going to take a while to recalibrate it. So it's not, you know, we're going to we're going to have mild temperatures this week. Yeah, it, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday yeah. could be mild here yeah. for you know what mm -hmm. we're those shoulder seasons right. are are challenging. But um, well, knock on wood, it seems particularly in the summertime that the system works remarkably yeah. well. I mean, I oh, it, never it works well. Expected it to be. Yeah. As Comfortable and it works based well. On the system but we it's have. not air conditioning; it's conditioned air. I understand. This is what I understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next, we have uh, four school committee policies for a second reading. Second reading. 
So if uh, Mr. Buckley That's fine. Uh, wants to take the lead on these. For a second reading in my language? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think. <laughs> okay, so I, have, well again, just quick explanation for all these. These are just a second reading. The language we're trying to update our policies slowly but surely uh, in accordance with the MASC recommendations. So on the first one, I move <laughs> for a second reading of policy DFD entitled Funding Proposals and Applications in the section entitled Fiscal Management. Any further discussion? Second. Uh, a second. Oops. One a second. No, Jeanine did. Oh, sorry. Jeanine second. Yeah. I really wanted to get out of here. <laughs> go, go for <laughs> it. Motion by Scott, second by Jeanine. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I move for a second reading policy DJEJ -E entitled Payment Procedures under Section Fiscal Management. Second. <coughs> further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> you said, <laughs> what the? What was that? You're trying like to disguise a, your voice? <laughs> what are you going to do? I know. What was that? I thought it was like a, a kind of ventriloquist kind of thing. I was afraid my cough drop was going to fall out. Uh, <laughs> I move for a second reading policy GAHB entitled Political Activities under Section Personnel. Second. <laughs> Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I move for second reading the policy GBA entitled Compensation Guides and Contracts under Section Personnel, comma, Professional. Second. <laughs> for the discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. It's nice to have a sixth member of the school committee. <laughs> yeah. Different voice. I didn't even see a lips move. Do you want to do the donations, Janine? Yeah. <laughs> You've got to know. <laughs> <laughs> sure, let me take the yes, one. I think we should do the donation. Okay, minutes. We have no minutes, no budget update. We do have a staffing update, correct? We do, Mr. Chairman. I, I just want to welcome um, Ms. Mariana Lacola to the district. Um, Mariana has been hired as a paraprofessional to support a student um, who had moved into um, the district recently, and she will begin her work here on December 11th. So, question: uh, Assuming that wasn't a budgeted position, you would be correct. So through our attrition savings, we believe, yeah. through our personnel who have left the district mostly in the summer, um, that we're offsetting the cost. Okay. That so would, the, but student, you're right. the new student entered with an IEP. New student required. moved into, correct, moved into town from another community and required, had, had the um, support of a paraprofessional in the student's IEP. Thanks. Any questions? Okay. Next, we have bids and donations. And before we get to... Uh, reading the bids and donations, I, I do want to mention for uh, the large audience watching us tonight that um, the North Reading High School girls um, varsity hockey boosters will be having their first fundraiser this weekend. Wednesday night, I think it's from 5 to 9 or 5 to closing, buy your food at China Cuisine and every dollar spent, the girls hockey boosters gets 10%. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, I hope to be buying some Chinese food Wednesday night. And well, that's to help defray defray the tuition. Co I mean, the uh, fee cost. Yeah. And whatever else they want to use, I think they want to buy mm -hmm. some. Hopefully, buy some merchandise. And uh, also, the uh, sorry, great picture of the six girls that we have on the team on today Facebook. on Facebook. Yeah. The first line, the entire first line, the three towns of all North Reading girls. Yes. And the captain is North. And the captain's right. North Reading girl. Yeah. yeah. And the second line, two of the three members of the second line are not ready. And then the other girl is a goalie. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's a very dominant they would say they were, have on the team. Some of the parents are saying it looks like we, they may have a really good team this year. Yeah. They made the states for the first time last year. They won two scrimmages over the weekend. Uh, they beat Burlington. Wow. And they beat somebody else. I forget who it was, but they won two scrimmages over the weekend. And, and on, on that issue, this is not to do with donations, but I, I will say that at the next um, – Athletic Subcommittee, I, I do think we ought to speak with Mr. Johnson uh, doing some research. I found that Peabody charges its students $150 to play hockey, and we're charging, and they're charging us in Linfield $1,500 per it's student. It's ridiculous, especially if our girls are the leads. And, and, and I know Mr. Johnson has that tried to, has, yeah. I know Dave Johnson has tried to renegotiate the deal, the deal and has gotten nowhere, but that, that to me just seems Yeah, this year's cost will actually be 1363 1363 with the PBD business manager a couple of and, last week. And they're paying $150. Shame on them. With really the total cost is 13 Total cost per athlete student. assessed to Lindfield and, and North, North Reading, Reading. For a student. And we have six players. Yeah. I don't know how many Lindfield So has. do you know the total cost for their program? Oh, 
Um, I mean, because to me, Peabody's picking up the difference. Peabody schools, not the students. I would say the total cost for a hockey program is what? So it's I, I have this. 20,000? It's about $30,000. For boys? Uh, and according well, for to the their team. information. No, for their for them. girls' team. And they're charging us about 8000 and I don't know how many girls from Linfield are on there. So right, so they, they're still, 11, they're probably 11, a third of if the class. Yeah, if it's 30,000. Their students 150. Yeah, but that means. So yeah, Peabody yeah, is there's absorbing there's the difference. That's right. Good. We're not. That's right. Linfield is as well. Oh, we're not. That's their cost. So what do you mean when? Good point. Right? I mean. No, Linfield, Linfield's kids pay almost as much. As we do. They pay the $400 fee, then they pay half of the 13 whatever. So the Linfield kids are paying. Right, um, they pay the 400 fee, and then half of the base, half of the difference. Right. So if the, you so know, they're paying about $900. What Julie's saying that, that the, they could be paying 850. The school district is picking up a significant right as part of their share right of their right cost for the for the kids. Right, but PB is a is more of an urban district, and they as as most urban districts, a lot of them don't have fees. Yeah. PBD's fees are they charge 150 per sport, and it's a 300. Dollar family maximum. Well, Wilmington doesn't have any fees. So. I mean, not does fees. Burlington, exactly. not does so Wilmington. Burlington. So. Right. But there's so, a reason for that. But I mean. anyway, it, it'll be brought up in the next. Uh, I, I just find it outrageous that they're charging us that much. And I'm not trying to cause an issue with the team. It's just not, you know. No, but I think the first step would be to have Dave Johnson talk to them and see if there's Correct. another way. And to I know they have a new this. athletic director. They do. Um, yeah. So maybe, you know, maybe we can. Maybe but obviously, we took this initiative a number of years ago to get this team off the ground. Um, you know, and, and at the time we did it, pretty much the deal was, okay, we'll do it, but this is what it's going to cost. So, But, I, but, I but just that think, doesn't mean we can't rethink I think it's time to re-look re at that yeah. agreement with... with I with agree. Yeah. So, all right. Let's get to the donations. Who's going who's gonna to read? I'll do the donations. I'm going to okay. need some help on some of the names. So. <laughs> I would like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of five, uh, fifty dollars from Kathleen Apigian to mm -hmm. offset costs for the Thanksgiving baskets at the Batchelder Elementary School. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. <coughs> I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $100 from Mr. and Mrs. Jeremy Shore for the North Reading Middle School's principal's discretionary use. Second. Further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of an American flag and pole valued at $165 <coughs> for the superintendent's conference room. Second. Oh, and that is from, sorry, VFW that is from the VFW Post 543 in Woburn. Second. Further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $500 from Integrated Benefits Group to support costs associated with North Reading Public Schools Parent University. Second. Further discussion? One question. Go ahead. What is that group? IBG is the company that's working with the town's health insurance carrier oh, yeah. to yeah. offset the, um, the, under the new system, yeah. Yeah. Like subsidizing, yeah. yeah, exactly, subsidizing the, Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a local. Yeah, it's owned by yeah. a local, per, local owned person. By yeah. Yeah. Uh, for the discussion, hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous? I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a $1,000 donation from the North Reading Hornet Hall of Fame to support our PE programs as follows. North Reading Middle School, $300. Little Elementary School, $300. Hood Elementary School, $200. Batchelder Elementary School, $200. Second. Just curious, how do they break down 300, 300, 200, 200? Partic participation. Yeah. Higher participation. Oh, okay. yeah. Was yeah. this in the turkey trot? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. So Billy, the little school won again? They did. For them. Good for them, yeah. Very generous donation. Okay. For the discussion. Hearing none, all those in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $1,041 from the Hood Parents Association to support costs associated with the shade structure project at the Hood School. Second. 
And I'm hoping that a hood school parent here can explain what the shade structure is. I was just going to so Shade structure? Shade. shade. You haven't shade. seen it over there? No. It's, it, go ahead, Julia. So through actually a close friend of mine, but through the PA, she works in a dermatology office, and mm -hmm. she heard about this. Um, I don't even know what program it. I think it's like answers. American Dermatology yeah. Association. Yes. It was a grant, a grant. So it was a grant that <clears throat> the Parents Association, they were able to secure the funding, and it's a, a shade structure. It's a covered area, so like cool. a canopy yeah. type thing, and it's when you Did drive you in back? the yep. parking yep. lot there. Oh, excellent. By, yeah. the, by the playground. Yeah, That's by the great. playground. So the PA, I believe, had to support some costs. So the, 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 the structure was awarded, yep. and right now we're, we're retrofitting the poles for the installation so that we can have it in the area, ideal area, mm -hmm. and that's what this, co this contribution is yeah, being. Yeah, the $8,000 grant. Is it over the, the blacktop plague area? No, it's no. going to be the area just... By the baseball field there, almost, isn't uh, it? Before you right, go in there. Before right you, yeah, right before, just before the little yeah. basketball court area and yeah. adjacent to the playground. Yeah. Yeah. So is this a grant from a private company? Is it a government? Agency? It was, well, it, no, it was this, the Dermatology yeah. Association. Yeah, this, we had brought this to the committee back several months ago. Yeah, I back think. maybe April and May. But we've been, we've been trying to identify the appropriate spot, and we've hit a little bit of ledge, and so it's, it hasn't, I think we anticipated that it would be installed by now, but it hasn't been. <clears throat> For the discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $1,500 from Mr. Aikudi Srikanth to support the first robotics program at North Reading Public Schools. That's that pretty good. good. That was, was pretty that good. Well yeah. said. Good. Ah. That was a guess. <laughs> Sounded right to me. That's right. Second. I, I also noted uh, that they had their first um, mm -hmm. practice or rehearsal, and I think they had Evan Russell's um, <laughs> offices. Who's a, he's a resident in town, and he has a, a real estate company, and I think he's letting them use um, their, the space to um, rehearse. They need they need to get in on the weekends, and yeah, they can't really afford to hire janitors. And so right now, I think they're that that's working for them. But it is, but we we are working. Dan Downs largely is the d director of digital learning is working with the group to. You know, I mean, the, it's new. It's a new program, right. but I think we're working. You know, there are a few things we want to try to I think do a little bit better to accommodate them. But at the same time, there are some limitations on access to <coughs> on right. hours. But I, I think that those are you know certainly things that we might be looking to to improve on in, as, the, as the program grows, but it's gotten off to a very good start, and I believe they participated in a yeah, competition in Canton. Yeah, they had something recently. Yeah, I think yeah. it was, it was uh, over the weekend in Canton. Yeah. yeah. And I know a lot of what they're doing, they're, they're getting together <clears throat> on evenings and weekends, mm -hmm. so that makes it tough to right. use the school. Right. Because you but have I would think like with there. basketball, yeah, if, if you know, maybe they could yeah, take advantage here, of a Saturday or something. The problem is we don't have a school staff person assigned with them. Uh, oh, there's uh, no, it's all parents. So. But that, that might evolve as the program grows in the future, and I'm hoping it will. Um, I had a conversation as recent as this morning with Dan Downs about the possibility of that. Okay. But right now, we don't, you know, there would need to be someone that's responsible for the security of the building, the, the supervision and such. Mm -hmm. and, um, we're just not there yet. But I'm, I'm optimistic that that will come. There's a lot of interest in it. There's a lot of parents of young, there is. younger yeah. students who aren't up at the middle school yet who are expressing interest in, yeah. in getting involved. So. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the discussion. Three none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of $2,000 for the fields at the high school and middle school from the North Reading High School Hornet Hall of Fame. Second. I actually saw Mr. Kirchi hand this check directly to, to Mr. Bernard. He did. So I can confirm that this check <laughs> is in the bank. <laughs> And what was that specifically just for? The, um, just part of the just it's the, the, the uh, uh, sod and irrigation okay. project. Yeah. It's money they they kind of committed right. to us sure. over a period just of time. Completing their commitment. Yeah. Great. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. I'd like to make a motion that the school committee vote to accept with gratitude a donation of five thousand one hundred fifty dollars from the Bachelor Parents Organization to purchase Chromebooks for the Bachelor School. Second. John, do you know, is this going to be a, is it a Chromebook cart? Are they just, are they purchasing just individual Chromebooks? Do you I don't believe that there's a cart attached with okay. it because the cart is pretty expensive. Okay. So that cost wouldn't necessarily um, support that because the cart accommodates 30, oh, okay. 30 Chromebooks. Okay, so they're probably buying 10, 12. It could be a 10 pack. Yeah, great. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. 
John, I, I saw this also today on uh, social media. I'm sure we'll be getting an official notification, but that um, Amazon Robotics had donated. They did. They saw, they, yeah, they, I, we, we are working to get the value of what they donated, but they did. They delivered them today. In fact, when you leave here, um, the, the, the glass classroom over the um, oh, yeah. corridor, We've set that up now as a computer lab. They donated 16 very nice uh, desktop computers. It looks like they're pretty powerful. Though. And they, they, the looks of they are. They're, they're, they're big, computer big machines. Yeah, and big they computer. actually sent their uh, represent. They sent about maybe six or eight people from their technology team to come in and do the installation too. Sure. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a nice donation. So. But yes, that'll be coming as an income. We're just working to get the value established. I know there's a, there's a North Reading resident who actually works in uh, corporate communications there. And so she had some pictures on. Uh, and her husband is a former student of mine. So oh, it's, really? a, it's been a nice connection oh, that wow. we've forged with uh, him. So they're actually supporting our robotics program too, that's working with the funny. first robotics group. So, and they, 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 uh, Rebe it's Rebecca Mikulski right. that I think you're talking about. She, yeah. when she was here today, she told me that, um, and I've heard of other companies, I know Comcast does these kind of like care days when they, their employees are paid to go out and do like community service projects and we talked about that today too. Cool. Um, so that, you know, there might be something like that coming in the future. But uh, yeah, it was a nice donation they made today. I think you'll we'll get the official probably one. get that maybe, if not the next meeting, probably I would say at the latest, the one yeah, after. Right, we're just waiting to get, we're just working right, to get yeah. the value, I think, of what the donation is. Well, as usual, thank you again to the community. Yeah, Wonderful, absolutely. Generous donations continue. Uh, subcommittee updates. Geez, Jay, this is so long ago. I, uh, the athletic subcommittee. Um, I know we discussed. I don't know what we discussed. Do you remember? Sports? I wasn't there. So there Jerry, that? no, Jerry didn't come. He, no, he was on. He, that's the day he came he back. Clean. Yeah. Oh, that's right. He was going. He was coming back from a weekend of four Mr. 4 p.m. dinners. <laughs> Mr. Conley gave a budget update. That's right. And we we, we talked we, a little about softball again. We talked a little bit yeah, about we'll softball. The budget uh, is in good shape. We talked about the anticipation of the gate for the Thanksgiving Day game, right. which was a good it's gate. Good so that'll help hit, our budget. We've already hit Michael's, uh, Mr. Connors' yeah, targets for Correct. the year for uh, yeah. gate receipts. Yeah. So we're in good shape yeah. there. Looks good. And we talked about, uh, you know, we field still maintenance. Field maintenance. Athletic which, facilities project. Yep. We got the update on the, um, we gave the committee an update on the color selections for the oh, partitions. Right. So the, in, in fact, that, that's good to <clears> give an update on that. The, um, that project's moving along. The foundation's yes. pretty much completed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if the connections to all the uh, utilities, utilities. Completed. I'm assuming I no. think they are. I, I thought are they I, really? Well, I thought I saw them down there today. They're working it today, doing some work, yeah. right. Um, hopefully the building is unscheduled for a sometime January, late January, early February time frame. Uh, we did pick all the colors. Um, the outside is going to be a, an artificial brick. It's not brick master. It's an artificial brick that um, you know is put on when the when the building is the built at, at the, the factory. factory. It's not added later in the field. Um, we picked North Reading uh, green like for the uh, green, partitions right. and the restrooms, and then we picked the colors for everything else: the walls and floors and right. what, whatever Ceiling, ceilings. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's funny when you look at it; it looks small. When you look at the at foundation, the foundation, the footprint. Like, yeah. The only thing I'll say though is, whenever you look at a foundation, I don't care right, if it's a like house, small. it always looks mm. much smaller than it is. But, but it's, it's, it's not huge; it's minimal. Right. I mean, you know. Yeah, but the concession stand looks like it's pretty good size. Yeah. The concession stand part of it. So we'll um, get complaints. Everything's too small, but we had to work within our right, within the budget, budget. So. And I do think you know one thing we have to um, we're going to have to look at with that is what the fencing is going to look like after that's done, mm -hmm. where we're going to put the fencing, for the, how for we're going to have the traffic flow for people coming to concessions right. and people coming into games. So well, we really can't make a decision on that until we see the building there and, and kind of visualize. Right. Yeah. yeah. But it's, it's coming along. And as far as I hear, no issues. Not a, sing, not a single issue not has a been raised. Issue. The weather's been cooperating for them it's to not, get the work done. Yeah, there should you know. not be any issues because basically they're just bringing the building in and right. setting it down. Yeah, well. So unless they drop it, mm. it's three parts. Unless they drop one of the parts. Mm. We should, we should, famous we should, last words. We should be okay. There could not Oops. possibly be any issue. So that's <laughs> it's amazing. They bring the three parts, the, the fixtures are all attached yeah. to the walls yeah. and everything, and then they go in there and they connect everything. No, it's not a single issue has been raised to date. And they, they move right along and they've gotten it done. Yeah. So. Good. I think that was it for athletics. I don't think there was anything else um, specifically. Yeah. It was a pretty quick yeah. meeting. We're always talking about field maintenance, but I mean, that's been going along well. Um, yeah. 
the new so, fields, the new fields worked out well. We got the yeah. um, got very, maximum use out of those. We fields got maximum use. Sure did. You know, we will have to look in the spring at where the goal areas were for soccer. Um, we got the we got the nets. We wanted to get the nets and cetera off the field as soon as the season ended, so we don't have kids up there playing and, and you know when the season's done. We almost so. got the entire softball season in. On the, I think right. they played almost every game there, yeah. right? A home game. Yeah. yeah. So where are we with? The softball scoreboards and all of that sort mm. of stuff. We're in limbo because we have mm. no money. We prioritized, yeah, we, we, Julie. The, we put a priority list together. Yeah. I think the scoreboard was first. Scoreboard was first. The, the, the complication with the scoreboard is the cost for the installation. Right. The, school committee, <laughs> the school department, the administration has committed to paying for the scoreboard. But, but the cost we got for the installation was, was like $10,000. Yeah. Was like and the, the board itself was just under. Six, right? So we're yeah. Continuing to raise money. We have the priority list. Was the scoreboard, was dugout, the dugouts, and, and, cages. and the batting cages. cages. Right. Those are the three things we're trying to get done, right? That's correct. Yeah. Well, right now, the, I, I would, I'd be honest. Say there's, there's, I don't see anything, and there's no action happening at this point because of the funding. Well, we've had some discussions with softball. Right, we had so discussion with softball about this. Yeah. yeah. But they're looking. Softball's also looking to spend money over at the little school. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Because youth softball, obviously, they focused That's on where, where their kids are right now, as opposed to where they're being. So we Couple did, years, they are, so. you softball is planning on putting some batting cages over there. Well, I, I was just going to mention, Mr. Webb, so, the, so a little update on that, the batting cages, and also do you remember there was a proposal for extending the, uh, the concession stand? Putting standard. a awning or something. Correct. Right. So Wayne Hardiker and I, um, largely Wayne, working with the building department, has toured the site, visited that, spoke with the principal at the school, and the building permit has been um, signed off on by the school department and given back to youth softball for them to now work with Mr. DeCola on the, the construction of that, would you call it, like an overhang or an overhang awning, an awning, right, of the concession stand. I did raise, just to be, you know, proactive, I did, you know, the, the principal had no issue with the, the batting cage installation in the, in the location they wanted it. Um, I just told the gentleman that um, it was Mr. Uh, Mulek, I think was his last name, M U L I K, to, that I thought he should just be, you know, aware of the of the proximity to the neighborhood. We're still doing it behind the, the fence, obviously. Correct. Right? Behind yes. The fence. Right. But though both of those things, the con the uh, concession stand addition and the batting cages, have been green lighted. I mean, we, you know, we, we really should have a scoreboard at the side. Behind the outfield fence. Isn't there a I wish we could find that. The, the, the cost of the installation came in much higher than yeah. we thought. This room. It, was, it was over $9,000. Yeah. I mean, is there something, like, what did we do last year? We just didn't just didn't anything, have, yeah. right? The scoreboard? Yeah, we didn't. Fre Julie, frequently, I mean, I went through four years of softball with my daughter. I don't think yeah. we ever used the scoreboard once literally. over at the little school. So it's nothing that we had right. that we don't sure. have now. I'll tell you what I would what um, I would like to say, and this would never happen, is like a, an old fashion kind of wooden manual scoreboard. Yeah, we talked about that. Puts the, puts the scores up for But we're continuing to try to raise money. I mean, if we can, right. you know, try to get some additional. Yeah. I think that, I mean, we have the electricity brought out there. That's there. Yeah. Um, we'd like to do it. It's just and I know it's Mr. financial. Mr. Connolly's been trying to, been dealing with the company, yeah. the, the company that did oh it. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Covers yeah. Like yeah. Over the top. On. Mm -hmm. But we've had a hard time yeah. connecting. And, and the cost yeah. is high because the space that we're covering is right. wider than just a, than kind of a normal, a normal dugout space. It's so a area. deep space it's from deep front space, to back. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but that cost was more than we expected, too, the initial It was, yeah. But it's on, a, up close it's to on our agenda. It's on our agenda. I, I just, you know, I, I don't think there's a softball boosters group at the high school, correct? Correct. So, I mean, that, that would be helpful if there was one, but at this point, there isn't. Um, secondary school building committee. We already discussed that. There really Nothing wasn't. More to talk about it this I think we time. paid our last bill, right? I wasn't there. I did not vote for it. I Dick would Gilbane. not have voted for it if Dick I was Gilbane. there. So yeah, it was the last bill that they gave. And they, they, I assume that they, they uh, uh, assembled that new piece of glass in the. Yes. Area. They actually, 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 my two understanding out of three, is the money right? hasn't actually been released yet. Oh really? Yeah. It's, it's my understanding. It's we did approve the bill. tomorrow. Yep. I think approve the payment. I think. Yes. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. You're right. Yeah. But I wasn't at the meeting either, but I understand it, was, it wasn't that lengthy. There was some executive session. A couple of them. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and um, Mr. Buckley, NORCAN board of directors. Both of my subcommittees were canceled. So oh. I think oh. the NORCAN one was at the time that the oh. driver hit the uh, oh. pole and took oh. it out. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. So we had no power, so we missed it and we missed sub. Policy we had to reschedule for this Thursday. Well. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Coming up uh, tomorrow, we have finance planning team. I believe Brad Jones is going to be there. Yes. And uh, we're also going to start um, talking pretty aggressively about getting budgets going for fiscal 19. Yeah. Fiscal 19. 19. Um, policy subcommittee is meeting on Thursday at my favorite time, 7 a.m. Yeah. The SSBC, as we mentioned, December 12th at 5.30. Athletic subcommittee, December 19th at 12.30. NORCAM, uh, December 21st. And then they usually have good, Scott, on the, this meeting, they usually have like good cakes and desserts that people bring in at the yeah. meeting before Christmas, if I recall correctly. A Agatha. Agatha usually brings some good stuff in. Yeah. Right. And then hmm. uh, the budget subcommittee, which we are going to try to schedule a meeting in January. Well, I think as chairman, you should pop in on that policy subcommittee just to see what's going on there. Uh, <laughs> Would you? I'll just go to bed at they're, 7 and they're, 6. They're rowdy at 7 Yeah, I, I can imagine. Um, the, other, the other subcommittee that we probably should be getting a meeting together is the um, contracts. Contract, we should do that. Yeah, I said that to we're him before the meeting started. We were just talking about yeah. it, yeah. I, I have some materials for both Mr. Venetti and Mr. Buckley, and I'm going to get them tonight. I also Maybe. found it interesting that um, there, right there. I know Wilmington was recently, mm. recently negotiating a contract, and I, I was reading the story, and they said that they had gathered information from 28 surrounding communities. So I don't know, Michael, if that's something you, I don't know if you can touch base with their mm -hmm. director of finance and see if there's some information they might have that we don't have that, that might be helpful. Sure. Yeah, I'll do that. Might be worth. I know some of the people on the school committee. I could okay. ask them too. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if they'd have it. I mean, we may have it. All, we may have it all. Um, but okay. they they just announced they settled their contract. Right. They didn't have a contract it was late. this year. It was late, right? but so they, no. they were actually settling for this year. Yeah. And, and then three years, more. Right. Forward. Yeah. So. Okay. Administrative reports. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I think you have a packet. I just have a few things I'd like to share with you. Um, for, you might remember that a, at a meeting uh, not too long ago, I mentioned that <coughs> North Reading had signed on with a consortia of six other communities, so seven communities out of the ten that are members of the SEAM Collaborative to write a, a state grant um, under the RADAR program, which is the Resource Allocation and District, District Action Reports program that's new to DESE. I'm happy to tell you that tonight, um, that we received the grant. We were one of um, one of 20 that were submitted and approved, and I think it's good news for our our community. It's about a $90,000 um, allotment. I've attached to you a press release that I sent to the transcript, which I think Mike is going to be in the paper on Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. Um, a story about your okay. Release. Great. Okay. So what what uh, essentially is is uh, is happening? This is this is nice. I think this is a, a nice opportunity for North Reading with um, some some communities um, in our in our region to work on uh, strengthening our practices around inclusion. So kind of just um, broadening our inclusion of all students in in the, in full um, immersion of the curriculum. And so what the idea is, is that we're going to be working with each other to kind of share best practices and also have a consultant in to work with, with all of us, um, with the idea being that our um, stand, state standardized test scores, um, where many of us identify our high needs subgroups as needing the most attention, will be, will be a focus area. Um, so the other communities I mentioned um, that, that are joining us, there are again six of them in addition to North Reading are Melrose, Reading, Stoneham, Wakefield, Wil Wilmington, and Woburn. So we'll be sharing best practices and also working with a consultant around the strengthening of um, inclusionary practices in, in, at all levels, kindergarten through grade 12. The second thing is um, I've included for you in a packet a recent letter that the uh, high school principal, Mr. LaPrette, received from the New England Association of Schools and Colleges notifying us of our continued accreditation by NEASC. Um, it's not all that different from the letter that I shared with you just about a year ago, um, but essentially um, it commends the, um, the high school on um, two er in two areas um, and also reminds the, um, the uh, high school administration that there is a five-year report due um, in 2019, is, which is a standard practice of the accreditation process. It's always good to make it known publicly that the high school um, remains uh, an accredited uh, school by the New England Association of Schools and Colleges, meaning it, it has met um, the objectives of a, of a set of pretty rigorous standards. 
I also attached for you a copy of my fall newsletter, which went out just before the Thanksgiving holiday, but I haven't seen all of you since then, so I'm providing this to you now, but it, um, it did go out um, just about a week and a half or so ago. John, it's now longer than the Boston Globe on Sunday. <laughs> it's, really, it's really good. Thank you. Thank it you. It really is. You do get a lot of nice feedback on it. It's you fun. Should. It's fun to do. You know, it really is. And I'm sure there could be more in it, but uh, you know, it's, it's good. So thank you for that. And then just a couple of kind of consistent, I think, with your goals and my goals is to share some things going on. And I'm, I, I'm not going to make any uh, reference to the fact that this might be all of the good things that are going on, but I thought a couple of call-outs for you were that um, Mentioning uh, congratulations to our middle school principal, Kathy O'Connell, who has earned her doctorate. She wow. successfully defended her dissertation wow. last week, um, and she will graduate formally in, uh, in December. So congratulations now to our Dr. O'Connell. Oh, so. Doctors are out here in the big yeah. bank there. It's a nice, nice thing. Jeez. So. Um, and then secondly is, um, I j again, I just I thought this was a really nice letter for, from the uh, Christian Community Services of the, of the community um, to our Transition Academy students and um, one of their paraprofessionals that they recently helped out with a uh, Taste of North Reading event. And um, you know, the, the transition, pro transition Academy is a program for students who um, stay with us beyond graduation date um, through age 21 and um, go out into the, into the community doing either um, volunteer work We've started a nice internship program with Marshalls this year in North Reading, where our students are leaving uh, during the school day and learning skills and also bringing their, their skills to, uh, to the community. And I thought this was a nice letter of recognition of, of one of their more recent events. How many students so, do we have in the transition academy? Let's before? see, we have one, two, three, four. Four Great students. Program. Very nice program, yeah, very nice. What was the topic on the dissertation? Will we understand it at all? <laughs> you know, I, I'm not sure what her topic was. Health yeah, and it was, wellness? It was a qualitative, or? huh? I thought it was like the health and wellness, like yeah, social, no. emotional. I thought that was. That's definitely an area of interest to her. I'm not sure that right. that was her do do doctoral know. dissertation yeah. topic. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Would you like a copy of it? Uh, a a summary, maybe. It, and I'm blanking out on it. Yeah? yeah. Oh, we got a call. I, I remember we brought a survey here. We had to get right, your permission. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 But I don't know the topic. I thought it was school climate. I thought that yeah, was the survey. Yeah, school climate. Yeah. Yeah. It was school right? climate. The survey yeah. definitely was. Yeah. yeah. It, it must be something in that yeah. area. Yeah. Well, yeah. School climate with the condition. Yeah. I know. Sorry, I What did she pass? Yeah. Congratulations to Dr. O'Connell. Yes. Congratulations. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Good question. I just wanted to um, take an opportunity to take a second to congratulate Mr. Prisco, the chairman of the Board of Selectmen, oh, yes. Mr. Gilberto, the town administrator, and the entire Board of Selectmen. I believe that on Friday they closed the deal on the very property. I think they received a check for approximately twenty million dollars. Twenty million one hundred thousand dollars. I think we're on the. I think they're on the tax rolls now at about a rate of about four hundred thousand dollars a year as a, as property owners. So they put a lot of time and effort into that. It's a huge windfall for the town. Mm -hmm. um, I just hope we can get our sixty six percent of it. <laughs> uh, but for but that. All, all kidding aside, I mean they, they they deserve a lot of credit. A lot of credit for According this. According to Mr. Prisco, they're going to begin that project in January. The infrastructure. Yeah, all right. We'll start digging in January. We'll begin in January. And so we have a finance planning team tomorrow, a meeting tomorrow morning. I'm sure we'll get more details. All right. Yeah. I, well, I have one more thing. We, we, we have to be aware of this and be alert. Um, Mr. Prisco today was challenging um, the school committee to possibly have an ugly sweater contest with the Board of Selectmen. We both have meetings on December 18th. <laughs> I made no commitment on our behalf. No. <laughs> However, Mr. Venezzi, no, Mr. Venezzi <laughs> also was non-committal. <laughs> To the contest, but I just want to make but you aware. But they have that challenged us. They, he has challenged us. Uh, I don't know how his board's going to go along with his suggestion uh -huh. tonight. So I may I may have to uh, email you and tell you to find an ugly sweater for. Can I, can I borrow Can I borrow one of your UMass sweaters? Those aren't oh. ugly. UMass sweaters are beautiful. And, that, and that's just <laughs> for the board members, correct? Just, no, I think, <laughs> I think I think it would be everybody. everyone at the table. Oh, no, oh, no. Everybody. Listen, present. John, you got out yeah, of dancing. At least wear an ugly <laughs> sweater. All right, yeah. come on. <laughs> I don't even have a sweater. But that brings up, do, are we doing our annual? Yes. I think we'll I, have I, our yes. annual right. celebration. That was our thought, yeah. Yeah. Okay. right? Yeah. But do we have the high school presenting next meeting? We do. We do. Oh. Don't put anything else on the agenda. Um, it's right now, it's pretty light. Okay. So. On Monday nights, last call is early. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's uh, so cute. <laughs> we got to get out of here by 8 o'clock. I, th I, like, I think I, I usually say like 45 minutes for the presentation. <laughs>
Yeah. yeah. So usually, it usually means an hour. Usually hour goes. 30 minutes. Yeah, it's a little, it usually goes a little longer. We've missed I think there were four. A couple of times, haven't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It yeah. We have. I think, he, I think he's bringing four, yeah. four presentations. Right. And now the tavern's not there anymore, oh, so we have to go, we'll go Mexican to for Christmas. We'll go to the show. <laughs> All right. Anything grill, else? Grill 19. Anything else? I'm trying to prolong this. It's only, what, seven? That's okay. We're we don't have to prolong. Yeah. No. Any, any more comments on the geese? Or? <laughs> no. Are they disgusting? Cheer, some cheerleading moves? Your favorite moves? I don't, I don't have <laughs> I just do my research. What are our odds? What, what, what are the odds makers put us at? I don't know. Trans and army team show up. Did you know that? Uh, but did you know before that the MIA does not um, govern cheerleading? I no. did not. I learned it's that tonight. The MS Mass Secondary School Administrators Association, which doesn't it's count the numbers for participation. It's the high school principal, right. as far oh, as really? athletes. Oh no, it does wow. not. Did you know yeah. that Caitlin's first year as coach, they went to state? Yeah. Really? She's yeah. We've had a long she's tradition, from North honestly, right? she a long she tradition. Born here, she said. Really good. She said. Mr. Mr. Yeah. like, will they please just end this? <laughs> she teaches in Melrose. Okay. She's no, nice, I'm very nice. She's done a nice job. Thank you. Looking somebody who comments on the grant. That's why I wrote about this. Any comments, Mr. Webster? You have. I mean, I've always. I think on on the grant, I think that you know we've always been at the forefront of uh, of inclusion here, and I know that you know. Even starting under under Dr. Troughton, Dr. Troughton. We, we started moving in that direction. Um, Dr. Willis continued us moving in that direction as John and John has continued to support that. And I think we have you know we've had a number of success stories of students going through who in other cases might have been placed in outside the district schools and have Correct. great success stories. Um, you know, we had a parent a couple of weeks ago. That's right. That's what I'm sitting here thinking. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And I, I just, I mean, I'm thrilled that we're, we're part of this because anything we can do to keep our kids here with their friends, with their peers, in their community, mm -hmm. as pro always, always as long as we can provide them with an equal education that they get an outside placement, I don't think there's anything better than that. Um, well said. I don't know if anybody else has anything to add to that, but, you know, it's just... I mean, that and, should and be our goal. And keep, then we have the Transition yeah. Academy. It's another example. Where the kids can, yeah. can stay. Mm -hmm. Is that th that's until they're 22, isn't it? Correct. Through age, yeah, up to age 22. Up to age right? 22. Yeah. So I, I, think it's a great, I think it's a great program. I think, and, and we'll be working. What will the results be? Will we get a report? or? We're going to be working with our own consultant, and then also the, the uh, DESC assigns someone to kind of work with us through the grant process to make sure that we're living up to what we said we were going to apply to do. Um, but I think the results will be, you know, we're going to be targeting our high need subgroups for all of our state standardized assessments. And I think if we see improvements there, then we'll know that our, our work had some, uh, had some positive impact. Great. Motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. second. Scott, anything else you want to talk about tonight? <laughs> no, I'm good. we're good now. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Unanimous? Thank you.